So good to have all of you here with me. So today I'm reacting to Foodie Beauty's video called Healthcare in a Foreign Land. This is not a long live stream, thank goodness, because I've got some things that I need to do later on today. So I'm just trying to get all of my reacts done right away so I can get to the other work that I have to do. So Foodie Beauty, she claims that she was sick. Uh, although, if you want my honest opinion, I've got some theories about that. Everybody that's been watching Foodie, we all know that while she was in Canada, she wasn't backing away from doing the party favors. Uh, the first time she went to Kuwait, she was complaining about things that she had never complained about before, such as the headaches and the migraines. She didn't complain about those things while she was in Canada and she had her rug habit. We're gonna call it rugs for the sake of YouTube monetization. Like she was, she, you know, was busy buying rugs, all kinds of rugs. You know, she's got a rug problem. <laughs> so when she was doing her rugs and going to the outhouse for rugs, uh, she never complained about migraines. She never complained about headaches. Suddenly the headaches and the migraines appeared when she went to Kuwait. And then she came back to Canada. She started up the rug situation. And now that she's back in Kuwait, suddenly she's becoming ill again. And I think that part of her not feeling well has to do with all of the rugs that she was buying in Canada, like the, the, the come down from the rugs. So she's supposedly sick, but yet she's not acting too terribly sick. She went to a clinic when she didn't have to go. You know, it could have been just a simple cold. And if you've got a simple cold, there's not much the doctors can do. You know, you can just get some cough medicine or whatnot from a drugstore and, you know, there's no cure for the common cold. But Foodie went, and this is also, again, my honest opinion, there might be a possibility that because Foodie could not buy her usual rugs, like she does in Canada, that perhaps she's found different rugs in Kuwait. You know, if you're someone and you want something and you can't get that exact something where you are, like you'll look for a substitute. So that might be going on. That if she's coming down from her usual rugs from Canada, she's going to look for a substitute where she is. So that, that might be a possibility. But I wanted to go over her video and also a lot of interesting stuff that I found on Twitter and also her community posts because she's been posting, you know, she's been busy all morning posting stuff. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. Let's start with the community post because there's not that many of them. Let's see. Okay, we'll start there. So foodie is supposed to be sick, right? Anybody who's ever had a cold, anybody who's ever had the flu, then you know that it's not a good idea to consume any kind of dairy products while you're ill because that just makes the situation worse. Dairy will... Uh, stimulate the mucus in your throat and in your nose but here's foodie making a community post saying i wanted to show you guys this lotus beast cough sunday from here in kuwait 
You can get them at this juice shop here. We shared one and it was plenty. So she's trying to imply that her and Sala shared this Sunday. Foodie, if you're ill, you shouldn't be sharing your food. That's number one. And if you're sick with a cold, consuming any kind of dairy, bad idea. So you're supposed to be sick and you're eating something sweet. You already have enough sweet in the house. You bought 68 candy bars. So why do you need the Sunday? Why would you crave sugar in the middle of being sick? Why would you be sick and be taking medication to dry you up on the inside at the same time you're consuming dairy, which is going to make the problem worse? So, yeah, she did that. She's supposed to be sick, but yet showing herself eating a Sunday and claiming that, oh, we shared it. No, no, you didn't. Uh, you've never shared your food. You, you've got food aggression. You don't share your food, foodie. Okay, so she did a couple's vlog of sorts going shopping. And she did a post showing a picture of French Right Girl. I guess she removed it. Here's another one, though. But yeah, she removed that. She removed the post because Frenchie. Uh, went on Shannon's channel yesterday and they were reacting to Chantal and they were having a fabulous time together and Foodie got angry and she fired off at Frenchie in her community post. You're supposed to be becoming a better person, Foodie, but just raging in your community post is not showing any kind of personal growth. But yes, yeah, she's still on the war path with Frenchie. Still trying to shame her. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I didn't scroll up. So, yeah, she was raging at Frenchie. An hour ago, she posted, for those comparing me, a human, having a cold or flu and getting treatment for it to blanking a sick 21-year-old pet way past their life expectancy with severe arthritis and heart disease and more, I'll pray for you. You can only treat a cat living at that age with those conditions for so long until the inevitable and the most humane option will be necessary. But FFG is the queen of prolonged suffering. After all, so I am not surprised her minions are leaving such comments. Also, for the person who sent me the screenshot below, I'll pray for myself after seeing this. So this is a screenshot from the live that Frenchie uh, did with Shannon. And I knew this was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen because... Foodie has had a lot to say about Frenchie not turning on her camera when she goes live. And then Frenchie goes on camera with Shannon. And of course, she's going to try to throw shade at her. Although, let's be clear, Chantal, you won't turn on your camera and show your natural self. You can only come on camera with a bazillion filters looking you look completely different than what you actually look. So you have a lot to say about someone who's coming on camera, natural, no filters, but yet you don't have the courage to show yourself on camera. You know, you're, you're, you're a coward. You hide behind that living avatar of filters rather than show the world who you really are. But yeah, she, saying stuff about Frenchie again. And isn't it something, Chantal, that in your mind and by your logic, if anything or anyone is sick with multiple ailments in your mind, just give up on them. But yet, isn't it funny that you've got multiple ailments, but people should pay attention to you. People should be concerned about you. People should give you uh, medicine to make you better. But an animal? Nah, don't bother. Okay, so here is a update on Sam. Saying chubby use update, I'm so happy he is being well taken care of by a non blank person who won't scare him with her voice or hideous face. He was shaved because he had dandruff and apparently this helps. I miss him every day. Just because I had to make a tough decision doesn't mean I don't thought I'd share with you Beezer. So, you know, she's giving like a little BBJ update. I'm sorry, BBJ, I'm sorry. Sam, it's Sam. So this is Sam. Sam had to be shaved because his fur was just so bad that they all they could do was shave him. 
I'm glad to see that Sam is doing well. I'm sure anybody but Chantal would be a better owner, but Sam looks very rested. Uh, he looks a lot better. Isn't it amazing that both Sam and BBJ, the moment they go to other people, they're doing a hundred times better than what they ever were with Chantal. You know, that should show you something, Chantal. Love does make a difference. A little love, TLC, can make so much of a difference in the life of a person or an animal. And it's such a shame you could not provide that care. It really is an awful shame. So with that said, let me go ahead and just switch to Twitter. Because I've just found a lot of interesting stuff on Twitter. Okay. I just had to keep switching back and forth because Streamate doesn't do that anymore. It's a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. Okay, so there's my Twitter. And I just posted a react of Amberlynn Reed. Something nice, a little palette cleanser from Kim Impossible saying, this is so cute. Cats will love on anyone or anything that will show them affection. So this cat is just loving on this sheep. <laughs> I'm sure the sheep is just a big living rug for the cat. And it's like, oh, a nice, comfy place to take a nap. And the sheep is like, whatever. <laughs> but the cat is loving all over the sheep. Oh, you feel like a nice, big, shaggy rug. I love it. <laughs> uh, Rocky Goabout says, Foodie Beauty, since they gave her cold and flu meds, they also suspected it could be viral in which case the antibiotic would be of no use. It takes a couple of days to grow a culture from a swab, so she was treated as though she had it or viral in expiration of her asthma. So yeah, if you go to see what's wrong with you, it, it does take a little while for cultures to come back, but they did give her a couple of things. They gave her flu drex and this other one over here. Um, I looked up the ingredients for flu drex and one of the main ingredients is caffeine. And why does that matter? It matters because while Foodie was in Canada, uh, she liked to use caffeine or something that is more powerful than caffeine to give her energy. Like she, she has to have caffeine. So if she can't get it in coffee, perhaps she's giving it in other ways. Uh, also, one of the side effects of things like nicotine or caffeine is it cuts your appetite. So, Foodie, are you taking these things because you're sick or because you're trying to keep yourself away from food? If you've got 68 candy bars in the house, just because they're there, you're going to indulge anyway. So, like, I don't know if you're doctor shopping. I don't know if you're looking around for things that you can get legally because you can't get other things. You can't get the usual rugs that you're used to, but uh, you also reveal in your video that you basically finished a bottle of cough syrup in one day. So my question is why? Why were you taking so much of that cough syrup? You don't need that much. Uh, this is from Just Me saying, you have more problems than BBJ. Why do you think you are worth treating? Uh, Kelly GM says, you stated that BBJ has heart disease. Well, you also mentioned you have an enlarged heart, fatty liver disease, diabetic, asthmatic, thrombosis of the lung, which are blood clots, high blood pressure, hypertension, possible gum disease. Your quality of life isn't great. You have trouble getting around without feeling out of breath. So you're healthy enough for medication, but BBJ isn't. You're no spring chicken. Your body has aged more rapidly because of the, of the blank you have inflicted upon it with your gluttony. You also have to sleep with a CPAP machine due to sleep apnea. So Foodie has a myriad of problems, a myriad of problems. And yet she's saying, oh, here's this other living thing that's not human. We just give up on it. So would that logic also apply to you, Foodie? because you are a mess inside and out, just give up on you. You know, you should care about living things as much as you want other people to care for you and to give you care. 
Okay, so D. Angry Scott says, Solid Gay Foodie Beauty, you guys can read it. Seems in line with her choice in men. I don't know if Foodie has a cold, but here's something of note. When Foodie was still in Canada, before she left, she was wearing the heart necklace. And Natter was popping up with all kinds of nice new groceries. And we know who in the past has bought him a lot of groceries. Also, given past behavior, when Foodie was seeing Natter, she would come down with throat infections. And I don't mean to be graphic, please excuse me, but um, certain intimate acts involving the mouth, he liked to do that with Foodie. And, and she got an infection in her throat because of that. So isn't it funny that this medication, you guys can read it. I'll, I'll, I'll blow it up for you. I mean, it could, it could treat other things besides this right here. But it can also treat that. So big question, Foodie. Just a question. Did Natter give you a little present that you then took over to Kuwait? Because it has happened in the past. Did he give you a little going away present that you took with you to Kuwait? Were you messing around with Natter before you left and then he gave you the little going away present that now you're dealing with? I'm just, I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Hmm. Okay. So Judge Judy left a comment for Foodie saying, suck it up. <laughs> oh, the, the choice of words. Suck it up, blubber cup. BBJ was living in pain from severe arthritis, a severe UTI, five claws grown into her pads, matted hair, dingleberries, and being starved. You were too busy chasing eggplant, eating, getting drunk, and staying blank to help her. And Judge Judy asked the question, how long do you think my comment is going to stay there? Oh, she'll probably remove it, Judge Judy. <laughs> so, yeah, BBJ was in so much pain. She was such a mess. And thank goodness all of that is being treated. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some parts that are going to be just managed. But she's going to be okay. Sam is going to be okay. BBJ is going to be okay. Foodie, well, that's entirely up to her. But she didn't mind her cats being uncomfortable or in pain but yet she gets a cold and she's running to the doctor immediately hmm mama whale says so the last time she was clearing her throat so incessantly she had a you guys can read it in her throat infection in her throat now she's doing it again and happens to have a throat infection <laughs> yeah i'm wondering if that's it there's no way to really know. I'm not the doctor to take a test, but is that what happened, Foodie? You messed around with Natter. He gave you a little going away present in your throat. You took it to Kuwait, and now you're dealing with it. Hmm. Uh, also from Judge Judy, Foodie Beauty, you said the last time you were in Kuwait, you already had your civil ID. You're so bad at telling lies. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to have your civil ID, so what's up with that, Foodie? Uh, this is from Sassy Pondu. Sam update. Long story short, he is still doing better without you. Look at that well-groomed boy. Yeah, he's well-groomed. I'm sure he's being well-fed. I'm happy. I'm happy knowing that both Sam and BBJ are in better places with the better, better people. Another one about Sam. Okay, y'all look at this. Look at this. Who is this person? <laughs> she did this. She did this little, I guess it's a TikTok or a picture. Who is this person? We don't know her. <laughs> this is Foodie playing around with her filters. Who is this individual? We don't know her. Is this the foodie that you want to be, Chantal? Is that why you mess around with the filters so extremely? Because this is not you. This is not you. How can you sit there and put down French Fry Girl or Kaya or any other reactor for how they look 
when clearly you're not comfortable with the way you look to the point where you will warp your appearance using filters to where it doesn't even look like you. We got the contour filter, bam, right here. We got the skin smoothing filter to hide the big pores. We even have the eye color filter. Yes, ma'am. She changes her eye color. Her eyes are not hazel. They are a dark brown. If you find pictures of Booty when she was younger and they are out there, her eyes are like a chocolate brown. She uses that hazel green eye filter. So it's like so many filters going on here. So many filters. Who is this individual? We haven't seen her. This is from Pierce Pets. Oh, look at this. The vet is treating the dog and the dog says, look at that look. He is so in love. That's a look of love right there. And Foodie, you have the nerve to say that pets don't have feelings. Look at him. Aw. That, that's the kind of face that'll melt your heart. What else we got here? Oh, here's something that's interesting from Hidden Truths. So Foodie Beauty over there copying Nikocado Avocado. You know what I think? I think this whole I'm sick thing, this is her trying to deflect from all the talk about the cats. Like she's been getting a lot of heat and she's trying to find a way to make people feel sympathetic for her. Whenever she gets in trouble, in the past, she did the ER visas. Well, she's not going to the ER this time. She just went to the clinic, but this is her way of trying to get sympathy from people and also get people talking about something else. She wants that sympathy. She wants the attention. She wants people to not think about the BBJ situation. So don't feel sorry for my cats. Feel sorry for me. I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for you. And again, another picture of who, who is this? <laughs> who is this? Who is this woman? That's not you, foodie. It's not you. No, ma'am. Maybe if you, look, if this was really you, maybe you wouldn't have had to pay $9,000 to Sala. I'm just saying. But clearly this is not you. This is the you, I guess, that you want to be. That you could only be with the filters. All right. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. That's the Sunday. More about the beast cough. <clears throat> All right, this is from Hidden Truth. This is from the live I'm going to review. She finished a bottle of cough medication in one day. I'm breathing. You know, after I made breakfast, I thought I'd see how it would go. I took my inhalers. I've been taking my inhalers and I've been taking this herbal medicine called Travisil. It's an herbal medicine you can buy here at the pharmacy for cough. And I pretty much almost finished the bottle and like. That's so excessive. You don't need an entire bottle of cough syrup in one day. Anybody who's taking cough medicine, you just like a, like a, like a teaspoon. That's all you need. You don't need to go that far. Why are you using the cough medicine that way? It sounds like you are overusing it. Like maybe you're using it for another purpose besides coughing, foodie. I mean, people have done that, getting cough medicine and not using for the purpose intended. Okay, that's something else. So we're gonna stop there. And we're gonna go on to the actual video. I don't know if I'm gonna review it all. It looks kind of boring, but we'll just take a peek and then there's nothing of note. We'll just dip, because like I said, I've got so much stuff that I have to do tonight. I've got another job. So let me just go ahead and share the screen. Okay, where is Foodie? There she is. All right, 
let's do this doggone thing, shall we? How much it costs for all of those who, for all of you who are probably curious about that kind of thing. I get questions a lot about like, what if you need healthcare there? And I never really thought about that until it happened. So um, actually, as you know, I actually, I'm sounding a lot better from the treatment I had, but I'll get to that. <laughs> I have been really sick for the past few days. Um, just really fatigue, not really congested. Yeah, I still want to know how 68 candy bars figures into getting healthy. I'd still like an answer to that question. How does basically a munchie haul equal better health if you're sick? Because I've never heard of that being a good treatment for being ill, whether it's from a cold or flu or otherwise. Explain that to me, how 68 candy bars equal to, I'm buying this to get me healthy. Digestion, but a bad kind of dryish cough sometimes phlegmy, mostly dry, uh, and just shortness of breath, like trouble breathing. It felt to me more asthma related, which I do have asthma. And I do take inhalers for that as well, as you know. I'm just enjoying a lemon mint drink, my favorite here, you guys know, Limonana. Yes. So, you know, she'd rather be drinking a Starbucks right about now. That's like her go-to when she was in Canada, she never reached for drinks like that. It was always Starbucks, sometimes two at a time. So today I woke up and I was a lot worse. Like my voice, you should have heard it. Like my voice is almost normal now. It's surprising to me. I sounded like so raspy, so coarse, just really, really sick this morning. And I was having a um, hard time breathing. You know, after I made breakfast, I thought I'd see how it would go. I took my inhalers. I've been taking my inhalers and I've been taking this herbal medicine called Travisil. It's an herbal medicine you can buy here at the pharmacy for cough. And I pretty much almost finished the bottle in like one day or two days. So again, that's not normal. It, it wasn't a tiny bottle either. I mean, it's a pretty good size. So why do you need half the bottle or three quarters of the bottle to feel better? You just need a little bit. And if you're feeling ill, why were you going out and getting a Sunday? How is that going to help your health? Yeah, it wasn't very effective. So I decided to ask Salah if he would be able to take me to a clinic. So he did. And we got back not long ago, actually. And so the whole experience was sort of different, different, sort of similar, like little differences here and there from in Canada, from comparing, but um, I thought it was going to be really expensive, but with like the total for the whole treatment and everything, including the antibiotics, including the medicine, including the visit, everything came out, would have been like equivalent to like around $33 Canadian. So, so I have kind of a serious question for you, Booty. So you went to a clinic and the visit was not that expensive. What if you have a more serious medical emergency? I'm sure that's not going to be cheap. And if you don't have insurance, what are you going to do? It, the way you're living right now, eating all those candy bars, going to town on the food, you are pushing yourself towards a medical emergency. And I'm sure if you try to go to a hospital, you're not going to be able to get away with just paying a little bit of money for that. Did you ever think about that? That you're in another country, you are Canadian, but you're not in Canada. You can't take advantage of the healthcare system uh, since you're not, you know, born in Kuwait. So you're not taking care of your health if you have a serious medical emergency, like a severe one. Uh, it could be pretty serious. Oh. <clears throat> It was only like maybe $8 to get seen at the clinic to see the doctor. So it was so fast. The difference was that it was so fast. It, it was not that busy, actually. But um, there were a few people ahead of us. Um, so we parked at the clinic. I went into the clinic and we went to this like window. A woman requested my passport. And so we gave them all the information. And that was pretty much it. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> just with my passport, that alone was, you know, enough to be seen, I guess. And so then, so then they gave us this like ticket with a number and uh, we went to this other little waiting area In the waiting area, I'll insert a little video here. I got a little bit of a video of it just to show you. It was, what are you doing? This is a waiting area for people. Why are you showing it? So colorful <laughs> and so different than, um, you know, the drabby waiting room I'm used to in the, in the clinics, but I guess just different artwork. I guess some of the clinics in Canada are not that drabby. I shouldn't completely dis, I'm not dissing on it. I'm just comparing, like it was so colorful and the seating was very different. It was more like benches with like these th uh, throw pillows kind of thing. Imagine being so lacking in ideas for content that you're showing a waiting room and describing the waiting room. Come on, Chantal. So luckily, um, we didn't wait long. We waited maybe like five minutes and then like our number dinged up on this like, I don't know, this little display that shows the next, the number that they're calling. Ding, dong, dong. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so then we went into this room and the, do the doctor was just there direct. So you know how in like Canada, you go into a waiting room and then you go into another little waiting room and wait for the doctor. Well, the doctor was just there direct. That's weird. He's he's there. You he just heard his voice, but he's off camera. You know, Sala, if she is sick, if she's got a true cold, if it's not just the come down from all the rugs in Canada, maybe you shouldn't be in the room. I mean, it is a tiny room. If she's got something that's contagious, you're going to get it, bro. Correct. So I sat down and he was like, yes, how can I help you? Sorry, I'm going to, if there's cuts in the video, it's because I'm cutting out the coughing. So um, I explained my symptoms to the doctor. And so that's another bad thing about foodie. She'll sit there and she'll cough and she won't even cover her mouth. So it sounds like you're sitting very close to foodie solid and you're, you're within, you're basically in the red zone with that i wouldn't he um then looked at my throat i actually have a throat infection which i had no idea about so um he said that could be contributing to the fatigue um, i did start getting a sore throat actually this morning a little bit so that obviously would be that would be the reason luckily he did check salah's throat as well his throat is fine so he prescribed me some antibiotics for this and for the breathing shortness of breath and the cough uh, and the other symptoms, he wanted me to have a rapid test done, a COVID test done, and also to have a nebulizer treatment done. So the nebulizer treatments, um, he actually prescribed for three days. And she's getting boring. She's going into detail about the treatment. It's just, look, she went to the clinic, they checked her out. That was it. Like, why do we even make a video about this? You can't talk about this in your next live stream. And it would take all of five minutes. And twice a day. So every 12 hours. Actually, he's like, you don't even just take this paper. I give you to the nurse's station as soon as you come. And you can go right in. So we went to the nurse's station. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. So I do not have COVID. I honestly was at one point wondering because, you know, with the travel and everything and yeah, so it's just mostly just maybe viral, uh, maybe mixture of the, the throat infection viral and also just really bad asthma. And he she is so incredibly lucky that she's never caught the bug. I, I, it, it blows my mind that everything she's done, everywhere she's been running around, being as germy as she is she never caught it it's just it's, boy she's got luck on her side because it sucks if you do catch it it'll knock you on your tail for a while and with all her health problems and her breathing she's so lucky she hasn't caught it he said it could be you know the change in environment it is very rainy here right now as well so you know the different climate changes going from extreme cold to desert weather does, can have an effect especially if you're asthmatic be very nervous because I don't know. I didn't know what to expect. So is this like the content that is the other side of her raging? 
Like if, if you take out the rages and the food, is this going to be the content from now on? This is boring, Chantal. I didn't know how much we would have to pay. Here I am thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to have to pay thousands of dollars or something. And I was just in such a relief. And whenever he took, whenever he told me how much he spent in total, it was like 30. Dude, you went to the doctor for a, basically a common cold. That's why it was cheap. And like I said, what if something severe happens to you? It's not going to be cheap. It's not. And here's something else to think about. If Sala is not there all the time, if you are locked in to that apartment, which you've said you are, I don't know if I believe you. It's kind of hard to believe. But if you are alone in that apartment and you have a medical emergency and you're in a place where someone has to come in and lock the door, that's not good. I mean, that's just more time than it takes for someone to get to you to get you help. And you're not helping yourself with all the unhealthy eating. $3 Canadian. I was like, that would be equivalent to $33 Canadian. I was like, wow, okay, that's good. And then headache, nasal congestion, decongestion, because I do have some aches and pains and just feeling overall sick and low energy and stuff like that. So, um, but my, because my breathing was getting worse, I thought, you know, I okay, you know what? We've only got a couple of minutes left with this. I mean, this is blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I'm I'm done here. Y'all got the gist. She's got a cold. Boo hoo. Tiny violins playing everywhere. She's got a cold. Make it a big deal of it. I've got a cold. Foodie, other people have had colds. Other people have gone through worse than what you're going through right now. They've had the sniffles and the 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 red, itchy, watery eyes and the sneezing and the coughing that just, you know, give, makes your head hurt. You're making a big deal over nothing. You got a cold. So what? Suck it up, buttercup. You're sick. Deal with that. Okay. So that's it for my react. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. I'll leave a comment. Would love to hear from you. Uh, do I think it's poetic? That she was in Canada and she did not care about the welfare or the health of her pets. And yet when she goes to Kuwait, she suddenly becomes ill. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think it's very poetic. Like she didn't care about her pets. And yet she expects everyone to care about a little tiny common cold. All right. I'm out. Take care. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.